Hello guys and welcome to this video to learn about lower third molars, okay? So of course we know that the mandibular third molars or lower third molars can lead us to complicate procedures sometimes depending on the situation of these third molars, especially when they are impacted, okay? So they can be vertically impacted or horizontally, you know, mesially tilted in most of the cases, impacted and then they still need to be extracted as most of the cases we will be presented with them giving you know a marginal bone loss so distal marginal bone loss to the adjacent second molar and sometimes even uh, root caries and resorption of those roots of the adjacent second molars all right uh, also there are other reasons to extract the third molars of course so uh, they can be leading to recurrent pericoronitis, they can have no antagonist, of course, so they can be not well positioned in the dental arch, okay? So this is discussable, uh, this is actually discussed uh, between the articles and the books, but in most of the cases that we have the third molars impacted, we are going to have situations of distal bone loss of the second molar, and this will be, of course, a reason for extraction, okay? Now, the secret here to perform a very nice extraction starts with a very nice surgical plan. And for this, in most of the cases, we need to use CBCT. Actually, CBCT is recommended for all the cases since we need 3D information to perform the surgical plan properly. Uh, don't forget that we have now some structures, very important structures, to diagnose the location in relation to the lower third molar, such as the mandibular canal. Okay, we are seeing here now in this in these images of this article okay the mandibular canal uh, where we have the inferior ovular nerve of course but that's not the nerve we don't see nerves in cbct don't forget about this we are seeing the mandibular canal okay and then uh, even the submandibular fossa okay so the lingual aspect of the mandible where we have the submandibular gland one of the main salivary glands and we are going to see these in this cbct scan very soon now, this is an article that I am recommending to you guys. It's an article from myself, published in the Imaging Science and Dentistry Journal. It's actually uh, an article from 10 years ago, but it's still valid uh, for you guys to learn how to plan uh, the surgical extraction of a third mole, of a lower third molar, okay? In this case, so the case of this article, there, were, there was a lesion, okay? So a radiolucent or hypodense, now it's 3D, so we say hypodense, a hypodense lesion, okay, which was uh, radiographically diagnosed as, feel free to pause the video and try by yourselves, which is the diagnosis, at least the first uh, option of your differential diagnosis list, which was confirmed by the biopsy, by of course the histological analysis, okay. And of course I'm talking about the dentigeral cyst. This was a dentigeral cyst, the lateral pattern of the, the dentigeral cyst, we are seeing that the lesion is uh, even causing uh, the expansion of the alveolar crest a little bit and then the inferior limit of the lesion is basically very close to the mandibular canal but the lesion is attached to the CEJ, okay, so to, the, to the distal CEJ of the third molar, all right? We can also see that there is distal bone loss of the second molar, so very important, so we still need to extract this tooth. Another complication of this case, that's why the case was published, is the location of the mandibular canal in relation to the roots, okay? So here uh, we don't know exactly, maybe the, the canal is uh, buccal to the tooth or lingual to the tooth or even passing uh, in between the roots. So how to diagnose that? And of course we need to have a dicon viewer, okay? So this type of software that you guys are seeing here, that's the Horus uh, software that I usually use here in my videos, okay? The one from, from uh, macOS, from Horus Projects. And uh, you guys need to, the, to tilt the axis to navigate through the three orthogonal planes, okay? And tilt those orthogonal planes uh, to be parallel to the structures that we want to assess. And then you can have very nice cross-sectional images of these teeth or of those structures uh, in order to diagnose the situation properly, okay? So that's the secret of today. Here, just to show to you guys what happened in this article, is that the cyst was removed, of course, was enucleated, which is the removal of the cyst along with the, uh, epithel the surrounding epithelial tissue of the cyst, right? And now you are seeing, of course, the cyst area healing. So, of course, the CBCT was uh, taken some months after this uh, procedure, and with elastic traction, 
okay, using an orthodontic mini screw, we could lift this tooth a little bit in relation to the alveolar crest uh, in order to detach the roots from the mandibular canal. Uh, see the article because then in, in the article we are showing the cross-sectional images for you guys to know how was the, the exact location of the mandibular canal in relation to this third molar. Now, without further ado, let's analyze this case that we have here. Uh, it's a case of a lower third molar indicated for extraction. There is no antagonist. The, the upper third molar was already extracted, but uh, we don't have actually a situation of impaction, you know, or at least it's not so hardly impacted. Okay, it's actually not really impacted. So let's, uh, we still need to diagnose before the extraction to see the proximity of the roots uh, to the structures, especially to the mandibular canal. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, navigate through the axial slices, just like always. That's the mandible, I am navigating, I am changing the axis, but following up what's happening in my axial slices, all right? So I am navigating here in the mandible and then take a look at this, the level of the mental foramen, so I, I am already seeing the mental foramen here, okay, in my mouse cursor, and then I am going upwards, and then I see the level of the roots, and then I will find the level of the third molar, okay, and here I have my third molar, so I will drag my axis to the tooth that I want to diagnose, just like that, and then I need to make the axis parallel or perpendicular, of course, to the tooth that I want to, to assess, to plan the surgery. And that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so that's not the correct side. Let me just change this side a little bit. Okay, now we have the correct sides. And then I will change the axis, okay, for us to see a very nice cross-sectional image, which is the one on the top left corner now. It, it would be my coronal plane, but now it's tilted. And take a look at this. We have the mandibular canal very close to the roots, and the roots are fused or seem fused here but there is bone in the middle, so the septum, the bone septum between the roots is still here. So, of course, this will not be so easy to extract, okay, in relation to other possibilities. So, that, that's the diagnosis of the mesial root. I will try to change the, the axis and take a look at this. The, we are seeing the septum here in the middle, but the apex in relation to the mandibular canal is close, but not trespassing the uh, the upper limits of the, the upper cortical of the uh, canal, okay? So I can still see the, the cortical of the canal, and then when I move to the distal roots, the cortical is still there, all right? So it's in, the apex is in continuation with the upper limits of the mandibular canal, but the situation is not so bad, actually, all right? So you could, of course, the patient needs to offer an informed consent, a signed, you know, to agree with the procedure and everything, you know, about uh, ethical uh, approval and, and all the, the consent of the patient for the procedure. You guys already know about this or should know. And then we can actually do this, this extraction without a procedure like the one of this article, okay? All right, so we can see the entire relationship of the canal and the apex, the now of the distal root, right? So all my axes are parallel to the distal root. So take a look at this. The three planes working very well for me to diagnose the distal root and the distal apex of this tooth. If you do this for all the roots or for, for uh, all the parts of the tooth or structure that you want to assess, then of course good things might happen because you guys will be able to do a very nice surgical planning, okay? Now, uh, let's analyze also the shape of the submandibular fossa, so it's not bad, it's not so... Uh, uh, the, the concavity of the, the submandibular uh, fossa is not so deep in this case, so not bad. Okay, now the second molar, all right? If I pull this uh, lingual, so take a look at this, there is a proximity here. Huh? When I pull the axis lingual, Okay, so this is the blue line taking this blue picture. That's the blue window. There is a square here, okay? Okay, so now you, are, you guys are seeing the blue window and the blue line taking the picture of the blue window. And then we can see that this root here is very close to the, the distal root of the second molar of the 4.7 is very close to the 4.8. And of course, we even see here periodontal ligament space widening, right, of the at the apex of this distal root. 
Okay, so of course you need to be careful for this extraction, you see. That's why 3D assessment is very important. And now at the end of the, the diagnosis, what I do? I do the 3D volume rendering. Okay, so I will now produce the 3D image. Let me appear here in the screen again. Okay, and then I will now rotate this image to see the right side of the patient like this. Take a look at the third molar. My third molar is there. Okay, here the, uh, maybe it's not bone loss, but the bone is not appearing because of the threshold of the of uh, the, the CBCT, of this 3D reconstruction. If you guys don't remember what is threshold or how to read CBCT, the basics, I will add here on the top right corner of this screen, the link for the CBCT videos, the one on, on how to read CBCT and the one on uh, how to assess anatomy on CBCT scans, all right? Now I will, of course, press the 16-bit threshold color edition because I want to remove this bone, okay? So let me try to, let me see if I can remove now the buccal plate of this bone in order to see at least the roots here, right? Okay, so now I am now trying to remove the, the, the plates, okay? And then I can at least, all right, and then I can at least see now the shape of the roots in 3D. Take a look at this, right? So depends on depending on the color, this will become better or worse. But I can now rotate this image, right? So if I want to plan, for example, my flap, okay, to or to see the the for from all the views, okay, my lingual view, for example, all right, the shapes of the roots are there. I can even cut out this part of the scan. I will do this quickly for you guys, but then I I will let me even cut out the ramus, okay, for the moment. Uh, of course, only of this 3D reconstruction. I'm not affecting the original Daikon files, okay? And then I can even have a buckle, uh, an occlusal view, okay, of this third molar, all right? So now I have an occlusal view of this third molar. Take a look at this. And then I could even see the lingual view, all right? So then, just to complement my surgical planning, okay? So if you guys liked, please hit the like button and see you guys on the next videos.